Jim. Jim is uh, with the uh, University of Utah, is that correct? Yes. Great yes. to meet you, Dave Vellante. Good to meet you. Welcome to theCUBE. Right. Thank you. Good to have you. <laughs> How you feeling, Dave? Hanging in there? I am hanging in there. <laughs> all right. So, um, all right, so we're here live. Um, big day for Hitachi. Uh, we're hearing a lot of culture, uh, a lot of virtualization, big themes in the industry. Uh, so Jim, tell us a little bit about your role at uh, the university. Okay, I'm the uh, director of IT infrastructure and operations, and uh, basically oversee the uh, the infrastructure, the data center, you know, network, storage servers, that type of thing for the university, both on the academic side and on the uh, healthcare side. So you're obviously a Hitachi customer. You've been a Hitachi customer for a while. For or? About 11 years. Get nice and close to the mic, so right. everybody's going to hear you. Sorry. Uh, so do you? So they, they talk about this vision of transforming the data center to an information center. Obviously, universities they live that. A lot of information, a lot of students come and go. Yes. You guys have the, uh, persistent data needs. You obviously, just because they graduate doesn't mean the data graduates. Uh, <laughs> you know, or maybe the data graduates to some other place. Um, or maybe not, it was it Hitachi. So tell us about that vision, and do you see that how that transformation takes place? Well, for us, um, the transformation has been taking place over the last few years as you know we've tried to keep up with the university as it grows. And technologies like what, what Hitachi offers on the uh, virtualization side of things are in support of where we need to go and to meet those growth challenges. And so, you know, when we made the decision, for example, to go to Hitachi uh, on the virtualization side six years ago, seven years ago, that was a very strategic decision for us, knowing that through virtualization, we could shrink the footprint of our storage initially and really grow that storage more efficiently and effectively over time, knowing that the healthcare demands and the research demands of the organization were just going to grow exponentially, which they have. It's interesting, you know, we hear a lot about doing more with less, and universities always have to do more with less. Yes, we do. So you guys are innovators in this yes. do more with less mantra. Yes, yes we are. Right. So, so six years ago, you started down the, the, the journey to virtualization. Yeah. So how about server virtualization? Where does that fit? Are you guys a VMware shop? Uh -oh. Yeah, we are a VMware shop, and this has also been a, a critical piece of our strategy. Four years ago, we were out of space <clears throat> and power in the data center. And so we either had to consolidate our servers or build a new data center at the time. So over that four-year period through virtualization and server consolidation, we're able to get by with our current data center and we're now just at the point where we're building a new data center. So so why HDS? You talked about the, the, the virtualization platform uh, you know a little bit, but 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 why HDS, you know, why I mean, there's a lot of choices out there. Well we and had then, you were early on, sorry to interrupt, but you were early yeah. on there. So that it yeah. was sort of new, it was really the whole virtualization thing was unproven at the time, right? It was, it was a, a little bit of a, a leap of faith for us. I mean, we, we went through an extensive search pro, uh, process of, of trying to find virtualization technology. I mean, we looked at server-based and, and really didn't feel comfortable with it. We had been using Hitachi equipment for quite a few years and were actually, and had had 100% uptime with their equipment. And so when we saw that they were doing controller-based virtualization, to us it made all the sense in the world. It, where it's integrated within the, the, the storage array, um, it just seemed like a much more reliable and um, approach to virtualization, which uh, in, in our opinion it has been. So you hear a lot about clouds, private yeah. clouds, hybrid clouds, would you, would you I, IT as a service, you know, what does all that mean to you? Are you, are you on some journey to the private cloud <laughs> or you know, are you just trying to you know, yeah. do more with less? Or what's, what's your take on that? Yeah, the cloud has been a challenge for us. We have a lot of folks at the university who have been wanting to jump on board with the public cloud. And the problem with that is we have a lot of sensitive data, that type of thing, that we really don't want leaving the university. And so what we've been trying to do is develop a, a private cloud that's just as cost effective as a public cloud so that we can keep our data uh, in-house and meet requirements such as what HIPAA demands of us so that we're not putting information out in an environment that's not secure and not protected. So the, the private cloud is very important and it's a type of service that our customers expect. It's a type of service that will allow us to grow 
and uh, provision services to the customer very quickly um, with, without them really having to make decisions about what it is they need. They just need to tell us, I need this much storage, I need these, this, these many compute cycles, that type of thing. How about things like backup and disaster recovery? Do you see the public cloud as a, a good candidate for those types of use cases? Um, <clears throat> it can be to an extent, but again, even our backup and recovery are still under the same regulatory com uh, compliance. Uh, we have the same regulatory compliance issues with, with backup and recovery as we do a, a direct uh, storage and, and that type of thing. So. So talk a little bit about more about the virtualization. So what, what percent of your, your, your servers are, are virtualized, roughly? Oh, gosh, probably... More than half? Yeah, I'd say about yeah. half. Okay, and, and how about apps? Less than half? Pro yeah, less than half. The, the, the problem with uh, applications is the vendor's ability to support virtualization. Some vendors... They you an Oracle shop? We are an Oracle oh, shop. Okay, uh, ability or willingness is uh, the yeah, other piece I, of that equation. I, I think it's the yeah <laughs> willingness. <laughs> right. Yeah. So uh, it, well, we heard some interesting stories last week at Oracle Open World about uh, Oracle software licensing practices uh, when the customer says they want to install VMware. Yeah. All of a sudden, they're charging for virtual machines. So you got to watch out uh, out there. But um, what's the what's so the inhibitor is is really the application vendors supporting and any other inhibitors that. Uh, or, or do you even want to go deeper into virtualization? Oh, we want to go as deep as we can. Okay, so you'd like to be as close to 100% as possible. Oh, absolutely. What's stopping you besides the, the application support? Uh, we're still getting a little bit of pushback from some of the system administrators who haven't bought into the concept of virtualization. So we're having to do some pretty strong mandates around that. To get so people to system come on board. admins, really, as opposed to, for instance, the application heads. Yeah. And and because oftentimes you hear about the application heads don't want to put. Uh, you know, a hypervisor in between the raw hardware and their applications, but you're saying the system admins, they want to maintain their, their stovepipes. Yeah, and uh, also yeah. It's, it's the, and also the application owners as well, so it's kind of a combination, but I think over time, they're getting used to the idea. A lot of them are, are understand the benefits, are completely on board, but still some holdouts. So you are a USP customer? Or? Yeah, we... In fact, we uh, had one of the we were one of the original USB customers, and then we now have a couple of uh, I think three USPVs. You don't have a VSP yet, do you? No, no. But so, so three USPVs. So, don't you think that you have a foundational infrastructure for going deeper into virtualization? Uh, do you feel like you're in pretty good shape there? Or? I think we're in good shape, but I think there are some additional things out of this new platform from Hitachi that we're looking forward to. And I, I think the biggest one there is the uh, the page level uh, tiering. Whereas, you know, we have database sitting out on tier one storage and this concept of being able to move page level data off to lower tiers as it's not used is very appealing to us because that's a, that would be a huge cost saver. And also from a perfor performance standpoint as well. So the, the automated tiering, lower your cost, yeah. minimize the complexities of having to move that stuff around manually, right? Yeah. Do you see that whole notion of tuning going away eventually and turning knobs, or is, are we still going to have you know, some proportion that has to, we have to roll up your sleeves and get in there and start manually placing data? I think it'll be a long time before it's completely automated, but boy, that, that should be nice when it hits that day. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, so um, in thinking about um, what you've done here with regard to virtualization, both at the server and, and storage side, what advice would you give your peers that are looking to do a similar thing? The advice I would give is you need to pursue it wholeheartedly. The uh, ROI is phenomenal, uh, whether it's server virtualization, whether it's storage virtualization, We've done several studies around this, and uh, the, the cost savings are just, they're amazing. Plus, there's, there are additional benefits that you, that you get out of this. Um, on the server virtualization side of things, more redundancy and robustness in the environment. On the storage virtualization, it really lowers your cost of uh, management. And, I mean, over the last six years, we've grown from just you know, a few terabytes of, of disk space to almost a petabyte, and we haven't increased the uh, number of staff managing that environment. So my last question, Jim, for you is, if you had a magic, you've been a Hitachi customer now for a while, right? Yeah. The better part of a decade. And uh, if you had a magic wand, 
and you could wave it, and it would change one thing about Hitachi to make your life better, what would it be? Well, I think, and, and hopefully this is coming, I think it would be their licensing structure around their software. And, but I think that from what my understanding of, of what they have announced today, that is changing and they are going to make licensing uh, easy, easier. And, uh, you know, we want to see these bundled packages of their applications and almost have these tools and the softwares as, as, as a service or a subscription type of thing where we can have access to all the tools and, and just pay almost an annual maintenance type of fee for that. You want simplified yes. licensing. You want on-demand, pay-as-you-go, yes. cons- you know, pay-for-what-you-consume. Um, and, and uh, wow, wouldn't it be nice if Oracle would give us that? Yes, it would. <laughs> 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 Don't hold our breaths. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Collective breaths. All right, Jim Livingston, thank you very much for coming on the Cube. It was uh, great to hear, hear your perspectives and uh, appreciate your time. No, thank you. Great to meet you. Good to meet you.